Hello everybody and welcome to the final Up The Archer of the year. It's a sad day for us guys on this course, but we are not going to let that stop us from giving you a belter of a show. It's been hard to cover sports. We have managed to cover a fair bit. We've got a decent show coming up for you, full of Cardiff Met sport. And here's just a little taste of what's going to come up. Well, that is what we have coming up for you today. But before we do get into it, let's throw it over to our very own Jordan Jones with the latest Cardiff Met sport headlines. Hello and welcome to Cardiff Met Sport News. I'm Jordan Jones and these are the headlines from the home of Welsh sport. Goalkeeper Will Fuller has announced that he is leaving Cardiff Met after 10 years of service. The 27-year-old played in the Europa League qualifiers with the Arches and was previously student president at the university, but has decided now is the right time to seek pastures new. In his departing statement, he said, it's hard to put into words the impact that the club's had on me as a player and as a person. I hope to have made the shirt heavy. Thank you, Cardiff Met. He is the second player to leave the football club in the space for a week as well, after half of West County signed his teammate, Dylan Reese. And sticking with football, Cardiff Met's very own Neely Martin made her NWSL debut on the weekend for Racing Louisville, featuring in their 3-0 defeat to Portland Thorns. Martin, who made seven appearances for the Archers this season, will now play her football in world football's biggest league and will come against the likes of Jess Fishlock and Me Megan Raffano. Switching to rugby now, and there is much to celebrate for our international Archers, who impressed on multiple continents over the past week. Scrum half Ethan McVeigh scored a try for San Diego Legion in a 40-30 win over Toronto Arrows. Meanwhile, we saw Caitlin Lewis, who recently plays for Wales in the Six Nations, call up to their training camp for the Seven squad in Portugal. And a Welsh teammate and former archer Jasmine Joyce is also on Seven's duty. She is hopeful of representing Team GB at the Olympics in Tokyo this summer after taking part in their training camp. And finishing off the Olympic theme for us, congratulations are in order to Paralympian athlete Alid Sean Davis. The former Met student clinched his seventh European title in Poland on Saturday in the F63 shot put. Davis is hoping to win a third Paralympic title at this summer's Olympic Games. That's all from Planet Archers here. Keep up to date with all the news from the capital of Welsh sport by following us on CMET Sport on Twitter and Cardiff Met Sport on Facebook. Have a good afternoon. Well, thank you very much for that, Jordan. And we'll have a little bit more on some of those stories a bit later on. But football is the game on everyone's mind right now. Domestic leagues are done. My very own beloved West, beloved West Brom have been relegated, but the Euros are just around the corner. And so there's still plenty to get excited about over the next month. And Darcy Morris is down by the football pitch right now with more Football Roundup. Thanks, Ali. We have plenty of football coming up for you on today's show. But first, we're starting right here at Cardiff Met. Two long-serving members of the men's team, Bradley Woolridge, the defender, and Will Fuller, the goalkeeper, have announced that they will be leaving the team. And we caught up with them earlier on this week to find out what Cardiff Met means to them. The thing that this club gives, is given not just me, but a lot of people, and I know, you know a lot of people that have left have, have spoken about it, is that development of the person not just the footballer, um, it's the all-round package and the support you get, not just on the pitch, but off the pitch. And you, know, you, you look straight away at Swanee. Um, you know, we've had conversations throughout the years and I've seen him more than, more than my dad in the last decade, but um, you know, forever grateful for everything that he's done for me at the club. Um, you know, various different people throughout the years. There's, there's names that you can reel off and like I say, I, I don't want to miss anyone by, um, by saying too many, but it's an incredible club to have been a part of. The journey's just been unbelievable. Um, yeah, you know, coming here, I found it not difficult at first, but, you know, I, I felt like I could be sort of playing in some of the higher teams and it took me a bit of time to work my way up into the first team. Um, 
but yeah, the journey since then has just been, yeah, just so enjoyable. Um, had such a good group of, of boys and coaching staff and um, everyone at the club as a whole, you know, like you say, you know, myself and, and Will leaving, we sort of came through at the same time and there's been quite a core cool group of us that have, that have been here throughout and moved through moved through the years and the divisions and, and whatever. So yeah, we've had we've had a lot of success and yeah, you know, the, the European stuff was for me really was was the pinnacle and not to say that once we got there that we didn't want to continue to try and achieve and get back to that. But yeah, in you know, in reflection that that was just yeah, the, the best experience that I've probably had at the club and one that you know you never ever expect to happen when you when you join the university side at sort of 18 or whatever. It's it's hard to really sort of think about all the different experiences and pull it all together. But yeah, just a, a thoroughly enjoyable experience. You know where we came from as a club to to that moment to, to not just qualify in the way that we did in, in almost a fairy tale manner, but then to play the home and away legs against the top seed. Um, you know, win a game in Europe, um, and only to go out um, on away goals is 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 probably the highlight. Um, but there's lots of little bits along the way, and there's 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 some that um, people look at and probably think, well, why has that been important? But you know, some of the, the grounds that we we went to coming through the leagues, um, I remember playing. I think stepping in and helping out the sixth team um, in Bucks once, and playing on an AstroTurf up at Cardiff Uni in a in a boiler suit because we didn't have a goalkeeper's kit. Um, you know, there's loads of memories, some away from the pitch as well, you know, with some brilliant, brilliant bunch of lads throughout the years. I'm leaving really just because of sort of, uh, I suppose, life decisions, getting a bit older. Um, yeah, I've got more things going on that I suppose I don't really want to be missing out on anymore. Um, and I'd, I'd spoke to Swanee about it, um, moving into last season and sort of said look you know I'm meant to have weddings and, and this and that sort of happening and um, we were going to sort of work around them this year um, but obviously with everything that's happening with the pandemic and things um, a lot of the things then we moved back to next year so yeah I'm just at a point where um, I've got things going on now that, that yeah I want to be able to do uh, I don't want to really miss out on and um, and yeah I either want to commit 100% to football or, or not at all really especially you know within the role of of captain as well. Um, I don't really think it's fair on me, you know, sort of dipping in and out at certain parts of the season uh, to go and attend different things. So, uh, so yeah, it, it sort of felt the right time. Uh, I've been here for 10 years. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, it feels like the right time for me to sort of go. And yeah, the club's in the club's in a good place. We ended up finishing last season fairly well. Um, so it's, um, it feels like feels like the right time to sort of move on. I am actively looking for the next the next challenge. Um, but at the minute, there's nothing on the table. There's nothing, nothing on the card. So, if anybody's watching this and they want a goalkeeper, um, my uh, my messages are open. I'm, I'm open to open to speaking to clubs, to be honest. But it was a really, really tough decision. Um, but you know, the club's in a brilliant place, it, and I, you know, I think I've left it in a better place potentially than we found it. Um, it's in great hands with Alex and and Max. You know, in in the, with the goalkeepers. Um, but the time is right now to try something new, I think. And you know, if, if I don't do it now, I probably never will. So um, I don't know what the next step is. It may not be greener, the grass may not be greener, um, but I think I'm going to have to give it a go to find out. Best of luck to them both. And now I am joined by football reporter and founder of a club pal, Joy, Jordan Jones. Thank you for being here with us today. No problem. Thanks for having me. So what are their hopes, uh, sorry, no, um, so what do you think then that's next for them? Well, um, from uh, speaking to them, both me and Ethan uh, spoke to Brad and Will, and it seems with Will, um, he's just looking for a new opportunity now at the club, but Brad's going to appreciate the finer things in life and he's going to take a break from football, and it is um, hard work for a footballer to commit to such a season, travelling across Wales, and, that, and I think it's, it's allowed time to have a break. Both of them have been great servants to the football club, um, both have been a part of that team that took them from Division 3, which was the fourth tier of uh, Welsh football, to now the Europa League qualifiers as well, and they leave with a massive legacy in place and if it was possible for the university to do it I imagine it would be great to see both of them have statues erected at Kinkoi Campus. Yes I'm sure that they will be missed and they deserve the, the break that they will have now. So switching to women's football there's been a storm brewing in the domestic game in Wales and Abigail Venny, Britain Ferry 
and Cascade are feeling aggrieved after being demoted from the Welsh Premier Women's League. In the latest news, we've heard that politicians are putting pressure on the FAW's decision and the Senate have, has made a statement. So, Jordan, can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, so, of course, obviously, the big story that is, is breaking in Welsh football this week is, of course, the women's football restructure. And, of course, it's very hard to get all of the three main political parties in the Senate to agree on something, but it seems that Welsh Premier Women's League football is a matter that's going to bring it to them. So, I've actually got a statement here from Conservative MS, uh, Laura Ann Jones, which she is, says, as the FAW for the Sports Council for Wales receives significant money from the Welsh Government, it is therefore right that its Deputy Minister that now intervenes and she's also stated uh, I alongside many people will ask the Deputy Minister to seek clarity from the FAW so basically what the Senate are asking is asking the FAW to explain the decision why they've relegated these three teams because some of the MSs um, the teams are based on their constituencies and they want to see why their teams are now not playing in the elite league of Welsh women's football as well and there's some controversy as well some teams have gone up and um, haven't been part of the pyramid structure and are now placing teams that have been in the league for some time so it's a story that's going to go on and especially with now the political pressure I think is this isn't the end of the story right now. So do you think that it's wrong for there to be political involvement? Well, I think um, the governing bodies of football, UEFA and FIFA, do not want political interests in football. And, of course, it, there is a reason why the Welsh Government wants to look into this, because, of course, they do. They are part of that branch that deals with grants that improve grounds, like the grounds here, for example. They give money um, to help with floodlights. and that's a, So they want to improve the standards of Welsh women's football, but they want to know that the money's going in the right places and the teams that are getting this fairly as well. Um, but personally, the FAW have been transparent. They've explained the decision process two years ago and they brought a licensing process in last year as well. So the clubs knew that this was coming. Um, I just don't think they realised that sport in merit wasn't necessarily at the top of the pile of the uh, scoring criteria. So let's finish on a brighter note then. Let's talk about the Euros. Wales had their first game against Switzerland this weekend and they obviously finished in the semi-finals in 2016. So Jordan, what are their hopes for the tournament? I think this time round is going to be so much harder for Wales, of course. It's a completely different team. There's about six players from the last tournament, I think. And of course, um, it was a great time the last time out in France, but the, the structure is different. It's all across Europe. So that throws in a few problems is that you've got to set up camp in one place and then move around. I think for Wales, the hope for them will be to get out of the group stage. It's going to be very hard. Italy are probably going to win that group. And it's between Wales, Turkey and Switzerland to be a second place team. Obviously, you can get through in third as well. But for Wales, I think it's second place that they want to get if they want to progress to the knockout stages of the Euros. Any players we can look out for? For me, I, I genuinely believe that Dan James will have, be one of the best players of the tournament for Wales. I think it's just speed of Manchester United. Such a great player, the way he plays. and I, He's got like a nice partnership with Kiefer Moore and I'm hoping that Kiefer Moore is the other player that I'm calling on to have a good tournament as well. It remains to be seen whether Rob Page is going to deploy that false nine formation. Um, but I think Dan James and Kiefer Moore. Amazing. So one cup that was decided was the King Coyd Cup last week that was played here at Cardiff Met. And if you missed all the action, we're going to show you the highlights. That is the win. The CR Slovakia, they've knocked out their long-time rivals, Moises European Tour, and they will go through to the final next week in the King Coyd Cup. Good shot, what a strike, what a finish. He's been causing issues all day and he has pulled out a shot straight from the top door. And he put it in, it's a goal for CF Tech and Slovakia and they have taken the lead. 2-1. Really thinks clinical finish there, one all, game on. The golden boot, drinking Thatcher's gold from his own boot. Great way from Mac. Who's the in the box? Oh, we've got a goal! Mitch Haraway takes the lead for Sashfield Wednesday. And it's against the run of play, but Sashfield Wednesday won't care. They have a one goal. Lead. The flank. Just going to try and take them, defend it, and get past him. Trying to find Haraway. Oh, and here we go. 
It's a penalty. The ref's given Kevin it. Kevin Russell is given a penalty. It was a foul there on substitute. Ozzy Thomas. Ozzy Thomas has earned a penalty and here's a chance now for Sheffield Wednesday to double it. Here we go. Matt Purdy. Sure little run up. Oh, and he's powered it home. There's no stopping that one. No stopping that one. Lethal finish from the man in form. The man of the moment, Matt Purdy. Terrific, Jordan. Absolutely terrific. Again, could be man of the match if it wasn't for the sensational Matt Purdy. And it could get better. One more, Cam Williams takes it through him. Oh, and that's a great piece of skill. Oh, oh what a strike. goal! What a goal! He's put the ice in on the cake. The cherry on the cake. 3-0. What a goal, Jordan. What a strike. Straight out of the top bins. Jack Greenwood had no chance. Look at the scenes there. What a moment for Sheffield Wednesday. Exactly. Look at Curtis Jones. Get him into the Wales squad. And there we have it. Sheffield Wednesday are the 2021 King Coyd Cup winners. What a triumph for Sheffield Wednesday. Curtis Jones on the floor. He is amazed. Kept a clean sheet. And look at that. What a game, what a game and a terrific performance for Sheffield Wednesday. Dominant throughout, there was a bit of spell in the, in the second half where CFTX like, looked like they were getting into it, but like, a fantastic team performance from uh, Adam Brobley's uh, team. Be the ultimate prize at Cardiff Met. Look at that, just the trophy. Looks like they're going to nominate someone to become the captain ball forward. It is Hamish Hurst. Adam Brobley, dis disappointingly, going up with him as well. The, the manager the skipper and, and the, the captain. Manager. Here we go, and they're going to lift the come your champions of the King Coy Cup, Sashville Wednesday. I think a fair few drinks will be drunk out of that tonight, Jordan. Oh, look at that, the great scenes there. They made their own chants as well. And they're going to lift, going to lift it up again. Deserved winners we'll in the end, Robinson. Jordan. Well, one of those voices that you actually heard just then was our very own Chris Knight, and he is here with me now. Chris, how did you find commentating on the King Coyd Cup? I absolutely loved it. It was a fantastic tour. It's nice just to be able to watch some live sport for once, but to be involved in it in the setup, both from the commentary side, I was also involved in the camera stuff. It was. It was fantastic and it was a great experience. You were involved as well, weren't you? Yeah, I did a bit of presenting for that. Um, it was really, really, it was great fun actually um, to do that. And like you said, just for some sport to be happening on campus, which is amazing. Um, but we all know his passion is rugby. So we're going to swap over to that now. Tell me what's going on in the world of rugby right now. Well, recently it's just come out that Ospreys mystery has been cancelled. Uh, there's been corona coronaviruses in the Ospreys camp, unfortunately. That's ended their premacy, pre uh, season prematurely. Uh, it means Treviso progressed the final against the South African team on the 19th of June. The Walsh squad's also been announced for the summer test against Canada and Argentina. It's uh, captained by Jonathan Davis, who missed out on Lions selection, but uh, Cardiff Met, former Cardiff Met player Aaron Wainwright is involved. It's a 34-person squad, and there's five new caps, and there's also recalls for Josh Turnbull and... Roger Williams and finally the Welsh women's sevens have been in action out in Lisbon in the European Championships. It was an opportunity to qualify for the Commonwealth Games but unfortunately a lot of them hadn't played sevens in two years and they finished eighth out of ninth losing five games out of six but they did have one victory against Romania but yeah disappointing result for them there but yeah it's uh, some uh, big news coming out of rugby in Wales so far. Yeah, amazing. And actually, next archer, we mentioned Caitlin Lewis. She's out in Portugal right now. Um, we actually caught up with her just before she went out to Portugal and actually in Portugal. So we just heard what she had to say about her time there. Playing for Wales is always an honour and a privilege. Um, the last six nations in this tournament in Portugal have been really tough and challenging, as you'd expect international rugby to be. But... Um, I think you can see improvements in our team and we're only going to get better from where we're at now. So I think I'm really excited for the next tournament and to see where the team can go. Or sevens either or, so. Um, and actually, she wasn't the only um, sevens player in action on the weekend, was she, Chris? No, there was a bit of GB sevens in action. Uh, both the men's and women's sides were involved in a behind-the-sort-of-scenes tournament against Ireland. Uh, obviously, they're trying to gun for selection. There's four archers involved there. 
Uh, from the women's point of view, there was uh, Jasmine Joyce and Heather Fisher. Both went to the Olympics in 2016. Both narrowly missed out on a medal, uh, finishing fourth. So they'll be gunning for revenge and they want to get back in that squad and, and right their wrongs. And then Dan Bibby and Rich de Carpentier, they're both uh, involved in the men's setup. So again, Dan Bibby was involved in 2016. He did get a silver medal. So he'll again want to be get back in that squad and try and go mm. one better. So. Well, speaking of archers and their involvement in a lot of these teams, what do you think is it? it is about Cardiff Met that just produces such talent? It's, it's a hard one to place, but I think it's just the overall rugby culture here. They've got a fantastic programme that develops players both on and off the field. They've got great coaching staff. They've got 11 teams, over 200 players. And I think the coaching staff they do have, including the SNC, there's a huge emphasis on that from the man, the myth, the legend that is Di Watts. Uh, we've we featured him quite a lot on our shows before, but you know he's a huge part in their development. The work he does behind the scenes is absolutely fantastic to producing Lions players such as Alec Cuthbert and, uh, yeah, players yeah. like them. And there have been some signings, haven't there, this week from Cardiff Met? Yeah, there's been a few. Uh, Ed Scrag and Will Gibson have recently signed for Cornish Pirates in the Championship. Um, Ellis Bevan, we, we spoke about him before, he signed for the Cardiff Blues. So yeah, there's been some really good news coming out of Cardiff Met and that, that production line keeps on producing world-class players. Yeah, definitely. And there must be just a great atmosphere at this uni that attracts them, wasn't there? I think, yeah, I've spoken to a few of them and they, they absolutely love it here. They, you know, It's not just the rugby, it's off the field stuff. There's a whole sort of culture developed around them, making them better players and sort of developing them on and off the field which is fantastic to see. Yeah, definitely. And speaking of our talented players, we've got another one in Tom Pearson, and we actually caught up with him to for him to tell us all about his time at Cardiff Met and what makes it so special. I love doing it with you. Smashed it. Me too. Am I off now? Yeah. Can I just stay here. Just be like. Yeah. With how long? How long have we got? So I started when I was, um, I think, five or six, um, kind of local rugby club thing. Uh, I remember Dad taking me down actually for the first session and I was, uh, I think I was in tears actually because also I wasn't keen at all to, to start but uh, that's where he played kind of uh, his, his adult stuff um, from the old RFC. Um, but no, he, he, uh, he took me down and I wasn't keen to start with but no, I soon got into it and uh, had a good, good few years there. One that springs to mind is kind of Jerome uh, Kano, uh, kind of All Blacks World Cup winner, uh, quite physical presence. So yeah, Jerome Kano, kind of his physicality on the pitch, and but just a bit of a um, enforcer. So yeah, I like that kind of player. It's a good course in this, in the fact that you can relate to it quite a lot. For example, say a nutrition module, there's um, it's quite a lot of examples you can kind of analyze different diets and that kind of thing and it is useful you can you can take that and then and put that into your into yourself and and see where you're going wrong see, see benefits you obviously read literature and research onto onto different things so yeah there's there's a lot of there's a lot of transfer across from what I learned in kind of lecture lecture theaters and seminars to uh, to, to playing. There's a little bit of everything in there um, just the kind of the, the, the comprehensive program that, that is run here over the three years and it's not all kind of it's not make or break it's kind of a lot of it is up to you though whether you want to kind of take it to the next level and and be as good as you as, as you as you could be um but no the, the program's there and if you kind of buy into it and, and and really enjoy it and and make the most of it then yeah it can uh, things like that can happen I think a, a, a good game um, we really look, look back on was at extra at home here, uh, my second year. Obviously, they were kind of near the top of the table, and we were we were kind of pushing for a home playoff. Obviously, a huge crowd out here on rugby one, and uh, we turned it kind of just just played really well, to be honest, and um, just outplayed them here, and it's, it was great to see. And it was turned out to be one of the last games uh, on here, which was obviously nice to, to come away with a win without without knowing. It was uh, going to be the last game here. It's been obviously huge for me it, over the last three years. It's probably been the uh, the kind of the biggest the biggest influence on uh, on kind of shaping me as a person over the uh, 
over the last three years and, and where I am now and it's yeah it's been it's been great and I could definitely recommend it to anyone thinking who uh, to join obviously be at uni to join the rugby club or, or to, to play uni rugby in general um, at Cardiff Met it's uh, it's been a great experience and, and one that I've I've loved. It's a good question. I think just the, the mates you make and uh, and the, the close knit bunch that, that you have here. It's uh, it's a real it's a real great club to be a part of, and there's there's loads of uh, good mates about. So yeah, it's, it, it'd be different kind of moving uh, moving away and and. Uh, New, new challenges, new things, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a great environment to be a part of. Thanks, Ali. I am now here at the Athletics track and I am joined by our very own Met Athletics star. She also represents Great Britain and Wales. It's Jenny Nesbitt. So, hello, Jenny. Hey. How are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me. No, thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. And of course, this year is a big year for athletics, but, you know, there has been big events over the year anyway, hasn't there? You know, one athletics star that's been making waves in the athletics world is, of course, Jake Smith. So, he, of course, he um, was in the World Half marathons broke a welsh record there but can you tell us a bit more about that yeah so jake's a very different character um phenomenal phenomenal athlete ex exceptionally talented um but yeah he did go to the world half um representing great britain and also wales and uh, upon his return uh, decided that he'd, he's he's going to change back his alliance back to, to england so quite controversial but um it doesn't take away from his phenomenal phenomenal performance there uh, 60 Sixty thirty one, I think it was, which was third all time. Uh, so fantastic! Yeah, incredible. What are your thoughts then on him changing from Wales back to England? Um, yeah, I mean, as a as a Welsh athlete myself, um, you know, I've made that move. I've I've I was um, I lived in England and I moved to Wales, and my my family's half and half, half Welsh, half English. So it wasn't challenging for me to kind of decide I really wanted to represent Wales and my mum's side of the family. But um, for him, he he only lived in Wales. He had no blood blood relatives um so i think he kind of hastily made that move and decided and it wasn't quite the right decision yeah. and uh, i think yeah a lot of courage for kind of saying that and deciding to to move back he's 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 not going to miss out on any opportunity he's one of the best athletes in the uk yeah. so and of course he also was a pacemaker wasn't he in the marathon and decided to run the whole race and in an amazing time as well what do you think about that well his coach james the has a uh, decided to call him a maverick a, a marathon maverick and um i think that's a very good way to describe him uh it's not it's not every day you can go out and run a 211 marathon which was <laughs> actually 30 seconds inside the standard for the olympics um as well like front running pace making on your own and i think he's an exceptional talent that's got a really really bright future yeah definitely and of course you've done a bit of pace making in the london marathon didn't you how was that and would you ever consider running the whole race as a pacemaker uh, i mean if i signed up to be a pacemaker i'd be very happy happy to drop out when I was meant to <laughs> um, but yeah pacing the the London Marathon last year was a, a really fun opportunity especially like within the kind of Covid era we're in at the moment to get that chance was was really good and another athlete that's been doing great is of course Adele Nicole of course she's changed from shot put now to bobsleigh hasn't she yeah I mean and this is a really exciting uh, prospect for her like phenomenal shot putter really powerful and strong as an athlete so to, to move to the bobsleigh I think yeah she's got a really bright future there well, let's go back to you you of course broke right was at the club this year haven't you 500 uh, 5000 meter record and how does it feel holding these records yeah like i'm really proud of them to hold i think one two three six club records wow. now um Incredible. from 3000 meters up to 10 miles uh yeah i'm really proud of that and i hope they kind of give future athletes encouragement and something to aim for and of course we just mentioned the athletics is coming up in the olympics isn't it and it's a big year for another of our archer athletes you may have seen our last episode of up the archer where we spoke to joel Breyer, where he was preparing for his race in belgium of course he broke records there for personal bests and uh, we caught up with joel Breyer early on in the week and this is what the man himself had to say kingdom joseph Breyer. So I went out there, bought a quite a big athletics meet last week. Um, it's called the IFAM Flanders Cup in uh, just outside of Ghent. 
So it was just an opportunity for me to run quick, um, try and get as close to the Olympic qualifier as possible and try and, and get the Commonwealth Games qualifier as well. Um, so it went pretty well on the first weekend, ran, ran a PB, uh, got put as I'm now number five on the all time list in Wales behind like you and Thomas, Jimmy Bosch, Tim Benjamin. Um, so yeah, that was pretty cool. And yeah, it went pretty well, really enjoyed it. Um, it was a bit of a weird one really. So uh, they've put their start lists out about 10 minutes before the race. And I was in lane one. So instantly in my head, I was like, oh, I'm going to run rubbish. Um, because lane one's known for being a tight lane by some really fast guys outside me. I was one of the slowest in the race um, by some really fast guys outside of me. So I was like, I'm just going to, you know, go as hard as possible, for as long as possible, and, and hold on to them. And it worked out pretty well. So I crossed the line. The clock said 45 five for the winner. Um, and I just worked out my head. I was about a metre or two behind him. So I knew I'd run a PB, but I didn't think it'd be that much of a PB, which is over half a second. <laughs> People will say it's been a long time coming and everything, but um, I, yeah, it has. I've been I've been working really hard and I've been hitting times in training, which would indicate that I could run under 46 seconds for 400 meters. But I never thought I'd actually do it this year. I thought I'd go 46 low this year, maybe 45 next year, but I didn't think it'd come this soon. Um, but for me, that actually got in there. It was just more consistently racing um, around similar times, and then it just dropped all of a sudden and. And yeah, it was, it was, it was quite, quite a surprise really. It, I was going out there to run, run a PB, but not that fast. European under 23s next month. I'm now ranked number two in Europe for my age. Um, less than a tenth of a second behind number one. So I'm gonna try and go out there and try and win it. And then in regards to the Olympics, I'm, I'm in, I'm, ranked number uh, two in the mix to go for the four by four as well so it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough one um, but I'm in the mix hopefully I should I should get the nods should I run well at the trials um, at the end of the month as well uh, even in the past week I've had so many different invites to, to different uh, world-class athletics events just for going under the 46 second barrier it's just it's opened so much more opportunities for me um, and yeah, I'm looking looking towards the future, looking towards the next 10 years of my career where the Olympics, the Commonwealth Games are real, real targets for me now. Um, and hopefully I won't be just going to these senior competitions such as the Olympics as a relay runner and hopefully come Paris 2024, I'll be there for the individual event um, as well. After the 45.84 of last week, 45.95 once again. Well, Joe is setting his own records right now, and we've also got someone else looking to break some records. Ex-swimming coach here at Cardiff Met, Dave Tonge, is looking to get into the World Book of Records, and here's a little bit more about his attempt. The facts are that someone had done a 24 hours and one minute swim without a wetsuit, swimming against a counter current, without stopping or only stopping for breaks and then going again. Um, there was no pace on it, no, you know, it was just total time in the water. So the cogs had been ticking over the last few months and when I decided to do it, I looked into it and thought, well, do you know what? If we're gonna do it, let's just put, a, let's not put an exact time on it. I've said 20, 24 hours, I'd like to go for longer, we'll see. Um, but yeah, that's that's the that's where it all sort of started. Basically, it's a 15 foot by 8 foot tank, and essentially what you're doing is just swimming against the turbine. So you've got a counter current. So you're swimming against the counter current in the pool. So you're staying still like you would running on a running machine. Um, but it's an amazing environment for the likes of Alfie to learn to swim quickly in.
Well, I'm joined right now in the studio by someone who knows a little bit more about this attempt. Joe Thomas is here. Hi. So Joe, just tell me a little bit about this. Yeah, so Dave, like you said, he's a, uh, an ex-Cardiff um, Met uh, swimming coach and he's embarking on a 24-hour swim in an indoor pool. Um, so it's a wetsuit, uh, wetsuit swim in, in a pool with a counter current. Um, so he'll be swimming, uh, swimming against that, um, taking five minute breaks every sort of 25 minutes, half hour or so to fuel up again. Um, and that's, it's going to be timed and, uh, and watched and it'll be available as, as a live stream here on Cardiff Met Sport TV now on Friday. And how did this all come about for him to start and want to do this? Well, for, for him and like many of us, um, the pandemic brought a lot of free time and a lot of time to think for, for Dave and, and for him he was at home looking after his little one and um, two months went by where he was thinking I need to get, I need something to, um, to, to occupy the mind. So he started swimming, he had a pool at his house and he started swimming there and while he was there he was thinking I could do this for a while, I could, I could do this and, uh, and he did a 12 hour swim last year and raised five and a half thousand pounds for the NHS. Um, he did a 12 hour swim because that's the average um, shift pattern for, for an NHS worker and he smashed that and then afterwards more conversations happened and uh, now here we are with a 24 hour one, he's doubling it. Yeah and you said he raised some money before, is there a specific charity he's doing it for this time? Yeah so this time he is raising money for Valindra Cancer Centre, it's a charity that is very close to him personally um, within the family and um, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a huge, what, what the work that they do is, is massively important and mm. it's, it's just a way for Dave, um, he feels, to, um, to, get, to give something back. And you, I, th you, I heard you caught up with him earlier this week, how is he feeling for it? Yeah, we've been very fortunate, I've worked very, very closely with Dave over the last few weeks. Um, I'm actually um, preparing a documentary on him and his swim, which will be available later in the year. Um, he's very excited to get it done, um, he's had a few um, challenges along the way. Um, but he's eager to get it to get into the water and, and put all of it behind him and, and just enjoy it. Yeah, well, it's absolutely amazing and a huge good luck to him. And like we said, it is going to be broadcast on YouTube on Cardiff Met Sport TV right from 9 a.m. from the beginning. So make sure to get that. Um, thank you, Joe. And it's not just Cardiff Met Sport related, related sport that we've been keeping an eye on here, um, but all sport across all Wales. And you heard in Talk Rugby earlier on. And Chris Knight is back with the latest Welsh sport headlines. Hi, I'm Chris Knight and these are the biggest sporting stories from Wales this week. Boxing first and Lauren Price secured gold at the European qualifiers in Paris. The world number one scored a unanimous points victory in the women's middleweight final and will now go on to represent Team GB at Tokyo at this summer's Olympic Games. Football and Wales kick off their Euro 2021 campaign with a match against Switzerland in Baku this Saturday. The 26-man squad will be hoping to go one better than the success of Euro 2016, where a historic run saw them reach the semi-finals. The match is live on BBC Two and kicks off at 2pm. Rugby and this weekend's Rainbow Cup fixture between Benetton Treviso and Ospreys has been cancelled due to three cases of coronavirus in the Ospreys camp. The cancelled match, which was due to be played at the brewery field in Bridgend, means that Treviso has been awarded the win and will now play in the Rainbow Cup final on the 19th of July. Sticking with rugby and Wayne Pivak has named a 34-man squad for this summer's test against Argentina and Canada. After missing out on Lions selection, centre Jonathan Davis captains the squad, which includes five uncapped players. There are also recalls for Josh Turnbull of Cardiff Blues and Rodri Williams of the Dragons. The match will be played against Canada on the 3rd of July, followed by two tests against Argentina on the 10th and 17th of July. And it's good news for fans as those matches could be played in front of a maximum crowd of 10,000 people. The Welsh Government have recently announced that crowds can return to stadiums from the 7th of June. For non-seated events, there's a capacity of 4,000 people and for seated events, it can reach a maximum of 10,000 people. We finish on cycling and Pride of Wales' Geraint Thomas finished third in the Criterium du Dauphine despite crashing on the final leg of the race. The Welshman finished 29 seconds back on Ineos Grenada's teammate Richard Porte after eight days of racing. The result means he heads into this month's Tour de France in fine form and will be hoping to clinch a second title. That's it from me as we head back to Ali in the studio. Well, thank you for that, Chris. And that is it. That's the end of today's final, final show. It's been a tough year for sports, but we've kept busy. And from all of us, on, all of our students on the sports broadcasting course, we just want to say a huge thank you to all of our course leaders for all of your support. 
Hopefully things are getting better and this summer is going to be a belter. We've got the Euros, we've got the Olympics, the 100, and there's a lot to get excited about. But for now, this is Cardiff Met Sport TV signing off and a huge good luck to the new bunch coming in. You're going to have such a blast. And also we just want to say a big thank you to the Archers basketball team who let us live stream a lot of games earlier when there wasn't a lot going on. And so here's a little teaser of what to expect from them next season. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It's our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us.